It's surprising really just how fast time flies. We've been talking about the PS4 Pro, Xbox Scorpio, and the Nintendo Switch for months. The Pro's already out in the market, delivering largely what we expected it would, a compromised sub-4K experience at an accessible price point. As we discussed earlier, the Switch falls flat when it comes to pricing, stuffing old mobile parts into a tablet form factor, then selling that at a price that's higher than what the PS4 is currently available for, if you take the Switch into account, that is. The Switch is due for a March 3rd release, but apart from the improbable miracle of it somehow not pouring Nintendo's 30-year-old hardware ambitions down the drain, it holds few surprises. With a whole extra year to take advantage of changes in the hardware market, it now fails on the Xbox Scorpio to drive console gaming forward over this half generation. Now, before we move any further, please note that this feature is a theory and opinion based on current technological trends. The only things we know for sure about the Scorpio is its 6 teraflops GPU, 8 core CPU, and high bandwidth memory. The rumor mills long had it that the Scorpio would make use of AMD's latest in terms of its graphics and processing components. The fact that Sony made use of Polaris and the Pro just months after AMD outed the Polaris platform indicates that the Pro specifications weren't locked down early. Which is interesting because this runs contrary to Nintendo's rumored approach to the Switch, where it opted for the mature Tegra X1 SoC over the much newer and more powerful X2. Sony's willingness to wait before finalizing on the Pro's hardware spec gives us a degree of confidence about Microsoft's hardware decisions with regards to the Scorpio. While raw compute ability in teraflops isn't an ideal measure for in-game performance, Microsoft's 6 teraflop claim for the Xbox Scorpio's GPU limits hardware choices. Polaris 10 at stock clocks a la the RX 480 can hit 5.6 teraflops, while the much older Hawaii platform as seen in the 390X can manage 5.9 teraflops. This possibly eliminates the chance of Microsoft using Polaris entirely. While Hawaii could, theoretically, hit the Scorpio's performance envelope, it's a 3-year-old platform that runs hot and consumes far more power than would be viable for a console. Moreover, production of Hawaii parts was wound down months ago. This possibly leads to the conclusion that the Scorpio will make use of a Vega CPU, likely with a significant underclock to keep it within power and thermal limits. Keeping Microsoft's 6 teraflop performance envelope in mind, Vega is a near certainty as far as the Scorpio's graphics component is concerned. But what of the Scorpio's CPU? It was initially assumed that the Scorpio would make use of an 8-core Jaguar configuration, possibly with a clock speed bump like the PS4 Pro. It's easy enough to see why. If the aim is to run Xbox One games at higher resolutions and not to provide completely new experiences, additional CPU power isn't really necessary. However, there are two possibilities for why Microsoft may opt for a real CPU upgrade. First off, when Microsoft initially took the wraps off the Scorpio at E3, it mentioned that the console will have an 8-core processor. Now, if a processor upgrade was completely off the table, there'd have been no reason for Microsoft to not dive into specifics. On the other hand, the fact that they've left it essentially a blank slate implies that the 8-core processor in question doesn't necessarily have to use Jaguar cores. Now again, if the aim is to offer Xbox One experiences scaled up to 4K, there's no need for a processor upgrade. However, Microsoft's made it clear that Scorpio will offer exclusive VR experiences that will not be possible on older hardware. This is where additional CPU power becomes crucial. High consistent frame rates are essential in VR as lurching motion can cause people to feel nauseous. VR titles have to consistently hit 60 FPS or higher. Commercial VR headsets like the HTC Vive and Oculus Rift actually have a 90Hz refresh rate. In GPU-intensive titles, poor processing power isn't much of a hindrance at typical frame rates. You can reliably hit 30fps and above even with a modest kit like the Core i3-4130, provided you have enough CPU grunt. The problem arises when you're trying to hit substantially higher frame rates. Because the processor has to make draw calls to the GPU, a CPU bottleneck will arise if the processor is unable to feed the GPU fast enough. The higher the frame rate, the faster this has to take place. As far as contemporary AAA titles are concerned, you really do need something as powerful as a Core i5 to allow your GPU to hit VR-ready frame rates. Microsoft has been closing up to Oculus, with the Rift actually able to run Xbox One games in a virtual theater mode. If the Scorpio is able to run Oculus titles, it will need significantly higher processing power. Microsoft could make this happen if they decide to incorporate a Ryzen CPU in the Scorpio. We'd reported earlier that a Scorpio presentation slide had apparently featured at AMD's CES booth this year, where the emphasis was otherwise on Ryzen. The problem here is with costing and the way Ryzen is implemented. Because they've not been able to compete with Intel on PC, AMD's plan, till date, was to offer more processor cores for cheaper. 
this made parts like the FX8320 particularly well suited for heavily multi-threaded applications, live video decoding, and image processing. However, PC games continued to lean heavily on single-threaded performance, meaning that AMD's 8-core designs tended to lose out to dual and quad-core i3s and i5s in games, even with sky-high overclocks. With Ryzen, the focus has been on improving IPC, with AMD claiming a 40% performance uplift per clock, compared to Piledriver. But the economics here make 8-core Ryzen designs substantially more expensive. AMD's own benchmarks pitted an 8-core Ryzen CPU against Intel 6950X, a $1,500 processor. While we expect Ryzen to come at more reasonable price points, it's hard to see a circa $500 console like the Scorpio packing an 8-core Ryzen processor when flagship Ryzen SKUs could retail in the vicinity of $500 all by themselves. Nevertheless, prices aren't set in stone, and it wouldn't be inconceivable that Microsoft makes use of a custom design with repurposed, low-profile, mobile-oriented Ryzen cores, as they've done with the Jaguar and the Xbox One. Coming to processing, it's a tough call to see where exactly Microsoft will position the Scorpio in terms of price. They have repeatedly referred to Scorpio as a premium console. This implies that the Scorpio will launch at a higher price compared to the PS4 Pro. Just how much higher is dependent on two factors, differentiation and component costs. Just how different the Xbox Scorpio experience is compared to the Pro will have a major impact on the kind of price point Microsoft sets. While the vanilla PS4 is Sony's fastest selling console to date, consumer response to the PS4 Pro has remained relatively tepid. Many people continue to game on 1080p displays, and apart from the moderate resolution bump, the Pro offers few other bells and whistles in most games, compared to the vanilla PS4 that is. Apart from the bump up to 1440p or checkerboard rendering, there's simply not much that differentiates the Pro or gives most people a reason to buy it over the now cheaper PS4 Slim. How would the Xbox Scorpio fit in this scenario? Microsoft themselves have stated that their plans for Scorpio are broadly similar to what Sony's doing with the Pro. They want to offer a halfway house console that will run current-gen games at higher resolutions. But if native 4K30 output is the only thing that sets the Scorpio apart from the PS4 Pro, there might not be too many takers for the Scorpio if it launches at a higher price point, say around $500. Microsoft's statement on VR and Scorpio exclusivity are a positive sign. It means that, unlike Sony, they're not entirely averse to the idea of some kind of Scorpio exclusivity. If this trickles down to regular Scorpio games, then Microsoft would have a bankable reason to sell the Scorpio at a price premium. This would be particularly compelling if the Scorpio receives a processor upgrade that allows for deeper simulation and system-based gameplay that is possible on current consoles. While Microsoft's current line is that there won't be exclusives, Microsoft has a history of backtracking on Xbox features, if the Xbox One's always online debacle is anything to go by. Scorpio exclusives, even if they're just a handful, would give consumers a real reason to buy the console over the Pro or a mid-range PC. Component costs play just as important a role in determining Scorpio's pricing. Vega 10 is AMD's flagship 2017 GPU. The full fat PC iteration of Vega 10 goes head-to-head -head with Nvidia's Titan X. This is a GPU that's capable of delivering ludicrously powerful flagship experiences. Sourcing a Vega 10 GPU, even partially enabled, will not be cheap. While the mainstream Vega 11 platform might offer the right kind of performance for the Scorpio, Vega 11 parts are even further off in the horizon. If a cut-down Vega 10 GPU is at the heart of the Scorpio, this significantly raises the minimum threshold for the Scorpio's price. If, in addition to this, the Scorpio features a Ryzen CPU, we're talking about a price point that's well in excess of $500. Now, it's worth mentioning that that's not an unheard price for consoles in general. After all, the PS360 GB launched at $599 back in 2006. But the higher the price set for the Scorpio, the more it will need to differentiate itself from the competition. By the time the Scorpio releases, the PS4 Pro will likely be a $349 box that offers a passable 4K experience. If more developers start incorporating 1080p bells and whistles modes, it might actually turn into a viable alternative for premium 1080p gaming, compared to mid-range PCs. If all the Scorpio offers at that point is a marginally higher resolution, people might not be willing to buy it at a premium price point. If the Scorpio wants to succeed on the market with a high sticker price, it needs differentiators, and the most straightforward way of achieving that would be to have Scorpio exclusives. What Microsoft has to say about that remains to be seen. All in all, 2017 is shaping up to be a very interesting year indeed for gaming. 
VR is likely to slip further into the mainstream. Pricing apart, the Switch offers a real console experience on the go, and the PS4 Pro brings 8th gen console visuals more in line with the contemporary PC baseline. And then you have the Scorpio launching in a dynamic market. How capable it is, and how sensibly it's priced, has everything to do with how it will fare. That'll be it for this video. If you like what we're doing, please go ahead and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.